Interacting with the user can be essential in a Python program. So let's see how you can take user input. Here we have a new PyCharm project with my main Python file. Let's use the input function to get values from the user. We will write this line of code. We call the input function with empty parentheses for now. In just a few moments, you will see what we will pass as argument to this function. And then we assign that value returned by the input function to the variable a. And then we are going to print the value of this variable to check that it actually contains that value. So let's save the file and run the code to see how this works. As you can see, we don't have any outputs yet, but if we click on this, we see the prompt telling us that we can enter a value. Let's enter, for example, hello, because we can enter strings as values as well. If we press enter, we see the output of the program in black. This is the result of running this line of code, the print statement. And this line that you can see right here in green corresponds to this line where the user input is received. This works great, right? We have the value that we need in, but it's not very descriptive. Let me run the program again. We don't see any messages or anything telling the user to enter a value. How will the user know what value he or she has to enter? Well, we can fix that with the argument that we are going to pass to the input function. Let's close this right here, and we are going to pass this value. Let me reposition this. Within the parentheses, we write the message that we want to display to the user. Please enter a number between 5 and 10. Then we write a colon and a space after the colon for readability purposes. Right here, we will see the prompt where the user will start writing the content, writing the value. So if you separate it by a space from the colon, that will improve the readability of the code. Instead, if we write it connected like this, immediately after the colon, the readability will be affected. So let's leave the space right here. And we save the file with Control S. And let's run the code again. Right here, we can see the message, please enter a number between 5 and 10. And we can see the prompt telling the user to enter a value. Let's say that we enter the value 7. We press enter and we see that value as the output. That output is the result of this line right here, the print statement that prints the value of the variable a. Great. So. Now you can use the input function to get values from the user and display a message, but there is something that you really have to be aware of when you work with the input function, and that is the fact that the value returned by the function is always of type string. Let's check this in our code. Let's print the type of the variable a, of the value contained by the variable a. If we run the code again, and we enter a value, let's say seven, we are entering a number, right? So we are sort of expecting that to be interpreted as an integer, but we see that it's not. It is read as a string and that will limit the operations that we can perform in our program with this variable. We will not be able to use it as an integer in our program, but how can we fix this? Well, if we want to work with the value as an integer, we just need to take that value and cast it or convert it to an integer. We surround the call to the input function with a call to int, and that will convert, remember to add parentheses right here before and after the call to input, and that will convert the value returned by the input function to an integer before assigning it to the variable a. Now, if we print the type of the variable, let's see what we get. Let's enter seven. And now we see that it is actually an integer. The value was casted or converted to an integer and we can use it in our code. For example, 
Let's say that we want to print this variable, the value of this variable, plus 5. That would be 12. Let's run the code and see what we get. If we were dealing with a string right here, that would result in an error. But we are converting the value to an integer, so let's see what we get. 7 plus 5, we get 12. Exactly what we expected if we were working with an integer. So we did our job correctly. We took the user input and then we converted it to an integer. Great, now you know how to take user input. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos linked right here. I'll see you there.